my God, my God, my God, my God. Any person propelled by the spirit of envy and jealousy is a witch. Those places where witchcraft is very dominant, those communities, just go, check. Those communities are known because of envy and jealousy. You buy a car. That night, you will be the talk of the village. But you will never hear them talking. They will be speaking in their houses. So envy and jealousy is what perpetuates witchcraft. And when we allow envy and jealousy that breeds competition and gossip in the church, we are bewitching ourselves. I'm angry about these things. And life just liberal, let, let me plead with you, my friends, my brothers and sisters. I know we are nobody's perfect. Cindy, you are not an angel. And you are not angels. But I, I want to plead with you by the masses of God. Never allow jealousy, envy, and gossip to have a root in this ministry. It is better to endure the weaknesses of your brother in love than to gossip them. Oh, you know when brother so and so, when he comes to sing, I, I normally feel like he's proud. I don't like when he leads worship. I want brother, the other brother. That is witchcraft. Oh, you know, pastor so-and-so when he preaches, hey, nasikianga vizuri, lakini ule pastor mungine ule, anaugianga na sauti mingi. What is the problem with that? Gossip is witchcraft. And then finally, accusations. Accusing people, even though you may have all the reasons why you need to accuse them, but God encourages us to be intercessors and not accusers. Let me share with you now the next 10 minutes on uh, manifestations I have observed in a church that are signs that you're dealing with witchcraft, sorcery, and divination. We can mention this in the church, but even in the family, in your own family. You just watch and see. For example, the first one is exhaustion and lack of strength. You are in January and you are so tired. And you took a two weeks break in December. There are certain kind of exhaustions and lack of strength that are not normal. And pastors, let me tell you, when you find yourself in a season where you don't feel you have strength and you are so exhausted and you can't explain, let me tell you, most likely you are dealing with witchcraft. You wake up in the morning, you don't want to go to work. You begin to drag yourself because there is someone, maybe a competitor, they are chanting against you. And so you should not take it lightly. You need to arise and engage in warfare. The second symptom or manifestation of witchcraft is strange accidents and misfortunes. Strange accidents and misfortunes. And one of the common accidents that happen when you are dealing with witchcraft is breaking of bones. Mifupa. Kaya laba, niki laba gandi masoda. E topic, nilipewa. So, si o min glitcha putia. So, receive. Broken bones. I was invited one time to a family. And uh, the parents were not saved. And they had a son. That son in a space of one year, 
he had broken his leg three times. Not when he's playing. He's just walking in the house. <laughs> One leg three times. Strange accident. You find in a week, the leaders of the church, two or three, have had a road, a car accident. Those things are not normal. And misfortunes, just things going wrong. You know? And sometimes you think these things are normal. I mean, every time you start a business, you have to lose money. Let me tell you, see your Kenya, new Chawi. You know, some may say, Kenya kukoifo. No, no, it is witchcraft. Praise God. I said, praise the Lord. Amen. Strange accidents and misfortunes. Thirdly, in the church, division and misunderstanding. You find people are not united. Leaders are not united. Saints are not united. A husband and a wife, they are divided. They misunderstand each other. Even when the wife asks for a spoon, it becomes a case. It's witchcraft. Depleted finances. You find your money is getting lost. The finances of a church begins to go down. That is a very common feature of witchcraft. Fifthly, extreme and unexplained discouragement and frustration. You feel you are just discouraged. Ask any pastor if they are honest with you. There are times when we feel so discouraged, we look at you, we wonder, what are you doing in church? Not today. Today I'm very encouraged. I'm telling you. I, I'm very excited. Today I'm very encouraged. But there are times you are just discouraged. You feel you don't want to serve. You don't want to minister. Am I talking sense, pastors? That is witchcraft. And undis undiscerning people, believers, and even sometimes leaders, you come to a place where you begin to sense my season in this church is over. Not knowing you're dealing with witchcraft. Disillusionment, number six. And confusion. Mental blockages. You cannot process things well in your mind. You are disillusioned. And all of that. Number seven, competition. These are manifestations of witchcraft. When it is affecting the church. You find people begin to compete and strife becomes common. Eighth, and this is very common, and especially on matters to do with divination. In a church you find sexual immorality becomes rampant. That's a manifestation that there is an attack of witchcraft. Particularly divination. That is why in the book of Revelation chapter 2, God came against Balaam and Jezebel because these two were the embodiment of divination. Balaam, he said, you have espoused the doctrine of Balaam. Now what is the doctrine of Balaam? Not the prophecy, but the advice he gave. Because the prophecy was not wrong. He blessed the nation. But after prophesying, he advised Balak, the king, to entice the young men of Israel to sleep with the daughters of Moab. Now that advice became a doctrine. And when the spirit of divination is allowed in a church, the results will be sexual immorality. You have allowed that woman Jezebel who calls herself she was not called. She calls herself. Now what is that? Divination. She calls herself a prophetess. Nyota yako ilichukuliwa. Ninaiona. 
jo tu turejeshe nyota hey kayaya divination you have allowed that woman Jezebel who calls herself a prophetess to entice my servants to commit sexual immorality so sexual immorality is when you see a church and a ministry that is dealing with widespread sexual immorality you need to know that church is under attack by the spirit of divination witchcraft and sorcery so when you meet those people you advise them oh brother you know be strong you need discipleship good lakini tengeneza program ya kufukuza mapepo you are dealing with divination oh my god kai god of mercy God of mercy. We are victorious. Somebody say we are victorious. Number nine is false doctrines and belief. Beliefs. You find false doctrine is widespread. A manifestation of witchcraft. And then ten, this is very major. Rebellion and idolatry. You find people are just rebellious. They don't want to submit to leadership. They don't want to submit to authority. They want to do their own things. They are rebelling, they are confronting leadership. That's a sign there is witchcraft we are dealing with. Idolatry. People begin to have other priorities and not God. Life church tomorrow, God is our help. Now let me tell you, we have announced these days of prayer and warfare. And God is going to give us victory against every spirit of divination. The strong man of Limuru. Every witchcraft, envy and jealousy that is being projected at us. God is giving us victory. There will be no strange accidents in this ministry. There will be no rebellion in this ministry. Nobody will be a victim of sexual immorality. God will secure his inheritance. In the mighty name of Jesus. Man, I've given you so much in a very short time. I feel I have sinned. Hmm? I wish in the end that deeper, go deeper, man of God. Oh my God. Lift up your right hand and begin to pray in the spirit just for two minutes. La pase que tala masakata. Just two minutes. Just lift your voice and pray. Ooh. Jesus. Yes, God is giving us a way out. Life Church Limuru, God is giving us a way out. There is a way of escape. We are not going to be victims of any spirit, any machination of the devil. We shall not be victims. Ye la 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 la. Jaka bagande boza, shala bagando robozaka. Repo satalia bazonda rekataya mazoka tala magande le boza. Le bande mana 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 ma. Shala mazorobo zakira bagando loboga la bala bala ba. Oh my God. Shanda Rama Kandele Katala Magando Robo Zokoto. Come on, somebody lift your voice. Lift your voice. Lift your voice. There is a way of escape. Even in your own life, your marriage, your family, there is a way of escape. Some of you, you feel you are under such an attack of the enemy. But God is assuring us today, there is a way of escape. Zanda da da ba 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 ba. Shandele manda ba da ba da ba da ba la ba la ba la ba. Shandele bozaya mazoria ba shala banda lolobo. Yeah, Apostle T is safe. Claudia is safe.
the pastors are safe their families are safe every family in this ministry they are safe there will be no divorce there will be no separation kapura saya lema kando bosakataya lepa no business will go under hey shaya baba yamandare worship team they are safe my god no minister will be a casualty of every demonic attack we throw blindness to the diviners we shut the mouth of witches rakayopa sata we confuse the wisdom of the sorcerers in the name of jesus ka shabara rapa kuria salia basoda oh we arise in the heavenly places we arise in the heavenly places we destroy every satanic altar any planting of the enemy any demonic system any demonic structure we demolish it today ha sakura sata yes we declare 2023 there is a highway for the people of god 2023 there is a highway for the people of god we tear the kingdom of the devil we tear it down we bring it down yeah sayaba oh jesus we disrupt every demonic networking we disrupt every demonic networking we disrupt every satanic networking right now in the name of jesus those that have conspired to cause harm and misfortune against the inheritance of god we disrupt the agenda Shaya la 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 Jesus Jesus I want us to release a shout Now I I'm going to continue this message because we are still in time but we are doing an operation right now. We are just flowing in the spirit. I want us to stand, those of you who can. And we are going to read Peter Zikia Bazoga. Verse 23 of Numbers 23. 23, 23. But before I read that, look at that. Look at this. Verse 21, he has not observed iniquity in Jacob. Nor has he seen weakness in Israel. The Lord, his God, is with him. And the shout of the king is among them. What is the shout of the king? It is a shout of triumph. Because every time a king is present, there is a shout of triumph. That is the shout of the king. And then in verse 23, he says what? Let's read out aloud. For there is no sorcery against Jacob, nor any divination against Israel. It now must be said of Jacob and of Israel. Oh, what God has done. Now, I want us to read that and personalize it, that verse. And then... We are going to neutralize divination sorcery and, um, and witchcraft with a shout of victory. This is what we are going to read. For there is no sorcery against Life Church Limuru. No any divination against Life Church Limuru. It now must be said of Life Church Limuru. 
end of my life. You can even put yourself there. Oh, what God has done. Can you read that and we give the Lord a shout? Let's try one, two, three, go. No. It now must be saved. Oh, what God has done. Yes. 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 Hey. Hey. Are ba ba ba. No witchcraft against your life. No witchcraft against your family. No witchcraft against your business. No witchcraft against your career. Yes! No divination can prosper in your life. Oh, oh. oh my God. Sit down. I want us to take 30 minutes at most. We finish this message. I, I sense God has given us a way of escape. Yes. There is a way. I see in the spirit. Amen. There is a way of escape concerning your life. Yes. Concerning your business. Concerning your ministry. Concerning this church. There is a way of escape in this year. 2023. We shall operate above every work of the enemy my God now there are three anointings that are very key in dealing with these three things I did a series of messages about the 12 tribes of Israel and uh, it's a very extensive message but I want to pick three anointings and just mention them. For a divine installation of this place. was ready to cast the nation but he encountered an anointing and when he saw that anointing right he could not in verse 24 the Bible says look what is the divine ready to cast them then when he sees it look at people right like a lion and lifts itself up like a lion it shall not lie down until it devours the prey and drinks the blood of his he saw a lion rising I pray any witch trying to be with you when they look at you in the spirit they will see a lion rising up. This is an anointing. You cannot be with a lion. It's going to eat you and to drink your blood. Now what anointing did he see? He saw the Judah anointing. It was only one tribe in the nation that rose up against Balaam. To defile him. My God. May God give us a Judah company. Now, in Genesis 49, verse 8, when Jacob was blessing Judah, this is what he said. Judah, you are he whom your brothers shall praise. You know, let me deviate a little bit. You know, I hear sometimes say, oh, Judah means praise, so let's praise. 
that's simplistic Judah does not mean praising God Judah means you are the receiver of praise <laughs> Judah you are the one who will praise no you are the one whom your brothers Judah attracts praise my God, your hand shall be on the neck of your enemies. May God anoint your hands to put on the neck of your enemies. Kapura. That witch who has been bewitching your family, that relative who has positioned himself or herself as a strong man, may God give you an anointing to put your hand on his neck. May you go and deliver your family. My God. Your hand shall be on the neck of your enemies. Your father's children shall bow down to you. Next verse. Judah is the lion's whelp. From the prey, my son, you have gone up. He bows down. He lies down as a lion. And as a lion who shall rouse him. How can you wake up a lion? I say, you lion, stand up. How can you? That is Judah. You, this is an anointing that you are immovable. It is a stature in the spirit. Verse 10. The scepter. Because of that, the scepter of authority will not depart from Judah. That means the Judah anointing, nobody can steal your dominion. Nobody, nobody. Even if you have opened a business and you are surrounded by sorcerers, the scepter of dominion will be in your hands. Me, I want those kind of believers. My God. You disrupt every satanic software wherever you go. And to him shall be the obedience of the people. The lion nature. That's the Judah anointing. And the people with this anointing, because we can stay for a long time there. I'm just rushing for you to get the essence. The people with the Judah anointing are people with such spiritual stamina. What they decree happens. Yeah. Because a lion is known by its roar. So that when you stand and begin to decree, you, you see, we have so many believers declaring things. I declare this will be my year of elevation. And then when you come to the middle of the year, you wonder, where was the elevation? I thought we were together. <laughs> Empty words. But there is an anointing you access, the Jude anointing. When you speak, your words are not vocabularies. They are not vocabularies. You release fire. That what you say, that word becomes, it is created before your eyes. When you say to one B, he becomes. And that is anointing I want us to pray today and say, Lord, release that Judah anointing. That when a man or a woman takes this mic to begin to lead prayer, every devil in Limuru begins to obey. Live church Limuru. God is making you to become a principality in this region. Ooh. We come to levels where we decide who will be the leader or not. You, you know the Judah anointing, don't joke with it. When he says you, you will not be president. After when they were P, you will not be president. It becomes. 
you will not be a member of parliament <laughs> that person will never taste power because a Judah has spoken you know I, I just sense fire please bear with me so he saw the Judah anointing rising up but then there is an, another anointing that Balaam saw he saw an anointing in verse 22. Back to Numbers chapter 23. He saw an anointing. He says, God brings them out of Egypt. He has strength like a wild ox. He saw an ox rising from the nation. Ah, it is an anointing. This is what we call the Joseph anointing. God brings them out of Egypt. What did he tell? What did Joseph tell his, 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 uh, his children? When God takes you out of Egypt, carry my bones. Do you know in the wilderness, they had the bones of Joseph? And how many of you know the anointing rests on bones? When Elisha died, the anointing was on his bones. When they threw a dead man, when he touched the bones, he woke up. Now, when the bones of Joseph were in the nation of Israel, the anointing of Joseph was going with them. And Joseph is characterized by an ox. Joseph is an ox. That is why you cannot break him. No matter how much weight you place on him, you cannot break him. And it's an anointing that deals with witchcraft. Jacob blessed Joseph in Genesis 49. But in Deuteronomy chapter 33, Moses blessed Joseph through his sons, Ephraim and Manasseh. Now look at what Moses says concerning Joseph in Deuteronomy 33, 17. I want us to read it together out aloud. Let's go. One, two, three, go. It's like a firstborn bull and his horns like the horns of the wild ox. Together with them, he shall push the peoples to the ends of the earth. They are the thousands of Ephraim and the ten thousands of Manasseh. It is an anointing to push back the enemy. When you have that anointing, you cannot come to the pastor and say the warfare is too much. Pastor, pray for me. Warfare is too much. What do you mean? Receive the strength of an ox. Where you are, the department where you have been planted, the place of work where you are planted, you appear like an ox. You push back the people. Not through malice, conspiracies and competitions. No, no, no. Through an anointing. Your presence is war. Your presence is a declaration of war. When you appear somewhere, the enemies of God are pushed back. No witch can operate in our jurisdiction. We're going to push them back. Praise the name of the living God. You sisters receive the strength of an wild ox. No matter the persecution, no matter the battles, no matter the confrontations, you will be strong like a wild ox. And within a matter of time, you will push back the enemy so that you can secure an inheritance for the people of God. Do you know Peter? God wants us to be a people that can secure a jurisdiction for God. Joseph, 
You know when Joseph appeared in Egypt? Kamutu Kapole, a quiet man. His work is just to interpret dreams. Within a short time, he had created space for the nation of Israel. Up to now, we know Goshen. And it is in Egypt. But it belongs to the children of Israel. This is an anointing that creates space. Yeah? It does not make you to operate in the midst of your enemies. Uh -uh. It scatters your enemies. I think Balaam saw horror. It was like a horror movie in the spirit. Is that a lion and an ox? This is too much for me. Spiritual strength. But it's a third anointing that we want to install today. It's called the Issachar anointing. The Issachar anointing. Issachar is characterized by a donkey. I don't have time to go into that. We know in 1 Chronicles chapter 12, verse 32. Maybe, let, let's read for the sake of everybody who is here. 1 Chronicles of 32. 32. This is what it says. Let's read together out aloud. One, two, three, go. To know Israel. So the Issachar anointing is the anointing to discern spiritually. Oh my God. We need this. We need this. To discern spiritually. Because on matters to do with divination, witchcraft and sorcery, your safety is in discerning. Yani, you come to a place, man of God, you are able to discern when you are under attack. You know, people sometimes are so blind. We, we just move. But you can come to a place where you can discern. My family is under a strange attack. So I begin to wake up midnight prayers and deal with spirits. If you don't have discernment, You can tell when your marriage is under attack. How do you tell these things? It is by discernment. Praise God. You begin to say, no, this thing is not normal. Something is happening here. Praise the Lord. And, and, and I think one of the problems with the church, many of us, is that we are too, we are too familiar with the material realm that we have no clue what is going on in the spirit. I remember I've given this testimony before. One time I was reading Morning Glory hey, in, in the apostolic house. And I, I was leading people in prayer and all that. And I began to deal with the spirit of stagnation. Oh, church, pray against stagnation. And as I was leading people in prayer, the Holy Spirit began to whisper to me, say, you are under a spirit of stagnation. I said, Lord, what do you mean? And he began to show me, yes. And he opened my mind and I began to see things that had happened in my life. I mean, how people, and I think I gave this testimony last time I was here. People came the first year of our marriage, gave us land free of charge. Someone gave one acre, the other one just blessing me. In a space of two years, all of them took back their land. They gave and they took. Blessed be his name. <laughs> and the Lord said, that is a spirit of stagnation. I tell you, I dealt with that spirit in a space of one year. There was a divine reversal. Now, if you don't discern, the devil may be eating you alive and you have no clue. That is not going to be your portion. We'll be able to discern. And we need that Issachar. Particularly not just designing times and season like in this scripture. 
But 1 Corinthians chapter 12, it is discerning spirits. Discerning spirits. I was sharing with somebody, I said, when I'm doing counseling, and I meet someone, you know, most of the time people come to the pastor for counseling because of uh, spiritual things. Anytime someone comes to my office and begins to talk to me, and they are dealing with witchcraft, there is always one sign I know. I begin to have headaches. Teach and answer kunyuma. As long as they are there, when they leave, it disappears. And that is one of the signs I know this one. You need discernment. Let me give you three examples in the book of Acts as I finish of how the church dealt with witchcraft. Acts chapter 8, verse 9. These are going to be long scriptures. Just bear with me. I will not keep you long. Acts chapter 8, verse 9. But there was a certain man called Simon who previously practiced sorcery. Now, do we have the old King James Version? The King James, Zile Babayao, authorized. But there was a man, a certain man called Simon, which beforehand in the same city used sorcery. Uh -huh. And bewitched the people of Samaria. Giving out that he himself was some great man. To whom they all gave heed from the least to the greatest saying this man is a great power of God and to him they had regard because that of long time he had bewitched them with sorceries but when they believed Philip preaching the things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ they were baptized both men and women then Simon himself also. And you know what? He did not only believe. He was baptized. Guy. Ume baptiza mchawi. Kai. Man, we need God. <laughs> And he was not only baptized, he became Philip's Amabera. He continued with Philip. So wherever Philip would go, man of God. My friend. <laughs> he continued with Philip. And wondered beholding the miracles and signs which were done. Now when the apostles which were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God. They sent unto them Peter and John. Whom when they were come down prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Ghost. For as yet he was fallen upon none of them. Only they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then laid they hands on them and they received the Holy Ghost. So probably someone had whispered to the sorcerer, the spiritual fathers of your pastor are coming. Was, leave alone the power of your pastor. The one on top. The, the one who gives that power. So it's so Simon. So it is Simon versus Simon. Simon Peter versus Simon the sorcerer. Now, 
So go, go, go back to verse 7, 17. Then laid their hands on them and they received the Holy Spirit. That's uh, Simon, Peter and John. Uh -huh. Then 18. And when Simon, now the sorcerer, saw that through laying on of the hands of the apostles, the Holy Ghost was given. He offered them money. Now, of course, that suggests to us there is nothing like receiving the Holy Spirit in, in silence. There has to be some manifestation. Because he saw something. And he knew, Iyo ni meona ni power in a transfer. So he said to them, Give me also this power. So the man was still a witch. <laughs> Give me this power. That whomsoever I lay hands may receive the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Go to the next verse. But Peter said to him, Thy money perish with thee. So that means he was giving a bribe. So even though he had come into the church, the man was still a witch. Witchcraft and leadership always go together. That's why every spiritual leader, you must have discernment. They either want to come close to a spiritual leader or a political leader. But Peter said unto him, Thy money perish with thee because thou had thought that the gift of God may be purchased with money. Do you know it is so amazing, Ken, that if Peter and John had not gone to Samaria, Simon would have been the assistant pastor to take over from Philip. But he took discernment to deal with that spirit. But not only discernment, but also a decree. He was told, Is that money that you made through witchcraft and you perish. From that point, we don't hear anything about Simon. That is the Issachar anointing and the Judah anointing dealing with witchcraft and sorcery. Acts chapter 13 verse 6. Now this is very serious. And when they had gone through the isle unto Paphos, they found a certain sorcerer. So if the early church encountered sorcerers, I mean, you have no choice. You have to deal with these people. Found a certain sorcerer, a false prophet, divination. So he was a sorcerer and a diviner. A Jew. Whose name? <laughs> you know what is by Jesus? <laughs> Son of Jesus Mudogo. Now look at this sorcerer, which was with the deputy of the country attached to a political leader. Sagius Paulus, a prudent man. So being wise does not immune you from this demonic influence. So he called for Barnabas and Saul and desired to hear the word of God. But Elimas, the sorcerer, for so is his name by interpretation, withstood them. Seeking to turn away the deputy from the faith. So what do you do when a sorcerer withstands you, Ken? You don't have a diplomatic discussion. The Judah anointing must rise. Ooh. Then Saul, who was also called Paul, now up on your genially change. Because now that, that anointing grows up in him. Filled with the Holy Ghost, set his eyes on him and said, Oh, fool of all subtlety 
and all mischief, thou child of the devil, thou enemy of all righteousness, wilt thou not cease to pervert the right wills of the Lord? You see, now that's a decree. Look at the next verse. And now, behold, the hand of the Lord is upon you. Now, when the hand of God is upon somebody, he can do either of these two things. Now, let's see what it will do to this man. And thou shalt be blind, not seeing the sun for a season. Now, why did he say not seeing the sun? Because he was a sorcerer and a diviner. And they use heavenly bodies. They use the sun, the moon, and the stars to bewitch the people of God. So now we throw blindness to every diviner. You shall not use any heavenly body to bewitch the people of God. Those people who are busy now to predicting months are saying January will be like this. February will be like this. Monthly prognosticators looking at the arrangements of the sun and the moon and the stars. We declare blindness on you. Now this is how to pray for your family. My God. Thank God we're in January. You shall not be able to see the sun for a season. And immediately there fell on him a mist and a darkness. And he went about seeking someone to lead him by the hand. May God raise you up as a lion. May your decrees have an effect in the spirit. So we declare every sorcerer. Every diviner, blindness on you. We throw darkness on you in the name of Jesus. Oh, Makataria Mazakata. Glory to God. He became blind. That's how to deal with these things. You don't negotiate. The last one, Acts chapter 16, verse 16. We know this very well. Now this is where you see discernment at work. And it came to pass as we went to prayer. A certain girl possessed with the spirit of divination. A girl. That means she was a teenager. Hey. A girl. Now how many of you can be intimidated by a girl? Ladies, I'm not being mischievous. I mean... I'm not saying a lady, a girl, 12 years old. Can you be intimidated? So this girl possessed with a spirit of divination, Pythos, met us. Now I want you to see very strategically, this girl is meeting them when they are going to pray. Why? So that she can intercept the prayer. There are times when the devil plants agents in prayer meetings. Which brought her masters much gain by sooth saying divination. Next verse. The same followed Paul and us and cried saying, These men are the servants of of the most high God which show unto us the way of salvation. How many of you believe that is accurate prophecy? <sighs> yani, the devil can prophesy accurately. Apostle Paul, I, I can imagine he was very excited. Yeah, maybe he told Silas, Silas, look, the Lord is confirming. What else confirmation do we need? Man of God, we are visited. And let me tell you, if nothing would have happened, this girl will be the chief intercessor of that ministry. Paul and Silas, international ministries. Paul, senior pastor. Silas, assistant pastor. Chief intercessor. Damsel. 
Every time the man of God wants to preach, daughter of God, come prophesy. Thou says the Lord, these men are the servants of the Most High. They have come to show us the way of salvation. Not every prophecy is of God. I, I, I really want you to understand that. Not every prophecy. And my brothers and sisters, let me encourage you. Don't just go to any Christian meeting. And don't just place your head on everybody to lay his hands on that head. Don't just respond to every altar call everywhere. You may carry things that you don't want. Next verse. And this she did how long? Many days. But Paul being grieved. Now, the spirit of discernment, the Issachar grace, was activated in Paul. He was grieved. Now, I, I took a while to understand, pastors, what helped Paul to discern that this is not the spirit of God. And I came up with a conclusion, my own. It is because she did it many days. Now, this is what she did. Every time Apostle Paul will go to pray, she will prophesy the same thing. Thou says the Lord, these men are the servants of God. They have come to show us the way of salvation. Now, when you prophesy that once, we may say, okay, this may be God, so let's not judge. But when someone repeats themselves, then you begin to know this is not God because God does not repeat himself. The Bible says God speaks once, but we hear twice. So Apostle Paul used the principle of scripture to discern the spirit in this girl. And rebuke the spirit. And all of a sudden when that spirit of divination was removed, cast out of the girl, chaos erupted in the whole city. They were put in prison by the businessmen, the politicians, and the magistrates. Because that spirit in that girl had taken control of the infrastructure of that city. You could not survive politically, economically, or even legally without the help of that spirit. Now that spirit wanted to bring the spiritual as well. So that you, you don't do church here without my permission. Paul confronted that spirit and that's how Philippi was turned to God. The early church dealt with sorcery, divination, and witchcraft. Let me tell you, even now, we have to deal with these things. And I want us to take just five minutes or so. We pray for these three things. Number one, I want us to pray that God will release the, 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 the strength and the power of a lion in this ministry. The Judah anointing. God is going to release the Issachar anointing and the Joseph anointing to push back the enemy and to create space in the spirit for the people of God to thrive and to prosper. Your business will succeed. Oh, that amen was very, very little, but I know you are receiving it. As long as you are under this covering, yes. your business will prosper. Yeah. Your marriage will thrive. Yeah. The, even if in your neighborhood everybody is divorcing their spouse, no, for you it will be different because you have come into an environment that is different. Yeah. Let's stand up on our feet right now and I just want us to make some prayer. Let's make some prayer. Oh my God. Worship team just come in front. We'll just take very few minutes and then we finish. Hallelujah. Can you lift up your hands right now and your voice? Just begin to thank God. Just begin to thank God. Just begin to thank God. Shalabasakapa.
Lift your voice and just worship the Lord. Shela mazata karamazota rabazeke talabagando. Shala mazela bakanda ria bazori abazala balabala balaba. Shafala bazondo roboza. Zambo rodo roro bozada. Oh, Come on, somebody, just worship God. Just worship God. We are about to make some prayers in this place. And I want your expectation to begin to rise up. Because there is an impartation that is about to take place in this place. There is an impartation. Ordinary men and women will begin to receive grace for war on behalf of a church, on behalf of your family. The purposes of God must be established. Yes. To pray for two individuals and the reason why I want to pray for them is twofold. Number one, it is what God is doing in their lives specifically, personally, but it's also what God is doing in this church generally and corporately. That sister at the very end corner there with shades, just lift your hand. Yes, you. Can you kindly come in front? That brother at the very end, that brown man, lift your hand. Yes, you, just come. Let's sing that song as we do that. Maintain the attitude of prayer right now. Yes, oh, Zanda lama zata pasi teke raba zanda kura. Yesu asai eshima.
to pray for these two individuals. And um, I'll begin with my sister. My sister, I sense in my heart that God has given to you the ministry of intercession and prayer. I don't know if you know anything about matters to do with intercession and prayer. A bit. God is giving to you the ministry of intercession and prayer. And the Lord will begin to teach you how to pray. And you'll begin to give birth to things through prayer. All right? You pray things and they begin to happen. And the Lord will place such burdens on your heart for people, for families, and for the church. And you'll find yourself being driven to pray more than you have ever prayed before. That grace is coming upon you. And as I've said, it's not just about, upon her as an individual, but I believe that this ministry one of your strong grace is intercession and prayer. And every one of you who is under this spiritual covering, may you receive that impartation in Jesus' name. You'll be like a praying machine. My God. And God will use you at the point and the place of prayer to give birth to destiny and to things. And, and I want to bless you, my sister and to declare that grace upon your life. Is that okay? Just come nearer here. Just lift up your hands to receive. Somebody lift your voice and just begin to pray in tongues. <laughs> My God, the anointing of the Holy Ghost is upon you. The anointing of the Holy Ghost is upon you. Shaya Mazada Baba 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 Shura Baba 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 gentleman, you know, I called him at the back there. His name is David. Uh, just let her pray. Don't, don't hinder her. It's okay. His name is David and um, the Lord spoke to me about him. And clearly, you know, when you prophesy, it's like you just speak what you've heard. Leave the rest to God. That the Lord wants to give you 
a gift of prophecy. Interestingly, because I've had a conversation with him, he's not saved. And he wants to get saved now. God is amazing. God is amazing. When God loves somebody, even if they are not in the kingdom, God pulls them. And this man, I want to declare this today, not now, but this man, in the years to come, is going to serve God. This man will serve God. And we want to pray for him to be saved and to bless him. If there is anybody here, you are not born again, we want to give you also this opportunity. Come join David. Let's pray for you for your salvation. If you are there, just lift your hands up. Lift your hand. You want us to pray for you to be saved. To enter into the kingdom of God. You are not saved. Yes, my brother, please come. You are not sure of your salvation. Come in front. Lift your hand and come. At the end there, this side, if there is anybody, you know you're not saved. You're not sure whether you are saved. Come right now. We want to give you this opportunity to surrender your life to Jesus Christ. On this side as well, if you are here and you're not saved, maybe there's an overflow. Someone can check if there is anybody there who is not born again. And they want to surrender their lives to Jesus. We want to pray for them in Jesus' mighty name. Let's sing that song as we do that. Lift up your voice, somebody. Just continue to worship God. Continue to worship God. Another one is coming.
I believe that the pastor in charge will talk to you after the service. There's a book, New Believers Booklet. You will help them to fill in, to tear the paper so that there can be follow-up. So, uh, Pastor Nyots, you can meet them after the service. After the service, uh, Stephen, David, and uh, Lauren kindly meet this pastor and he's going to talk to you very important things. Let's praise the Lord for that. Let's praise the Lord. And so we declare in the name of Jesus, from today, may the hand of God come upon you. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. May the hand of God come upon you to help you. Oh my God. Oh Jesus. Oh Jesus. Oh Jesus. Haya la la basa. Sando morana ba. Shandele le le bos. Hey! My God, may the hand of God come upon you. Oh my Father. In the name of Jesus. May the grace of God be upon you in Jesus name. So may prophetic believers begin to rise up in this ministry. People who will discern, people who will see in the spirit, people who will know the mind of God in the mighty name of Jesus. Now, in the next three minutes, I want us to make these prayers and then we finish. Let's ask for these three anointings. The Judah anointing, the Joseph anointing, and the Issachar anointing for yourself personally ask for these anointings now can you lift up both of your hands above your head lift your voice right now and begin to pray for the next three minutes just ask right now ask 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 us by faith my god Somebody lift your voice and ask. Ask by faith. Say, Lord, release the Judah anointing over my life. Release the Joseph anointing over my life. Release the Issachar anointing over my life. May there be a divine installation. Sandele Masaya Maeda la 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 Shando ria kataria bazo in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus hey Holy Spirit of the living God activate us my Shaya ba 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 and it will be established. Holy Spirit of God, give us the strength of an ox to push back the enemy, to create room for your people. Lord, give us discernment. Spirit of God is upon us today. Open your heart and receive now by faith. Open your heart and receive now by faith. Open your heart and receive now by faith. Shayam and Ebo Satala Baba 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 Jesus! 
Jesus, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And today, in the name of Jesus, we declare every divination, every sorcery, and every witchcraft against this house and families in this ministry expires now. We destroy every demonic networking of sorcery, divination, and witchcraft. And we declare life church Rimuru shall operate above every work of the enemy in this year 2023. We speak that in the mighty name of Jesus and we declare receive the Judah anointing. Receive the Joseph anointing. Receive the Isaac anointing. May the Lord activate you. Rise up as the army of the Lord and take your inheritance in the mighty name of Jesus. Somebody shout! visited, not in a bad way, but in a good way. And it would be such an error for men to leave destinations that are far to come and honor a man who ministers to us every single day. Let me tell you why they keep doing what they do. Because God is beginning to change him from just a voice speaking to a territory 
to avoid speaking to a nation. And I pray, listen, no clap. I pray that God will not rise intercessors and miss people in Limuru to pray for him. It would be an error. That other people out there are the ones that are praying for our people. Must be the ones that must catch the burden to pray. For if we are to also reap of spiritual benefits, we must be found in the place of prayer. This teaching for me is not just a teaching for us to understand on how to war on our own behalf. No, it is a teaching for us to understand on how to war on the behalf of the ministry. We need to move. Let us pray. One as if. One as if. May you be the intercessor. May you receive the spirit of discernment. May we ascend to heights that God has marked for us in the spirit. Amen. You love, uh, but I know he's not here, but I know you, you guys love Pastor Mark. One as if he were. We love him so much because he carries such a teaching and a prophetic teaching grace. And I believe that was not just a word for now. It was a word to catapult us to the next level. There is such an acceleration that God is bringing. And I pray that we, that discernment will not just be to discern the evil one. It will also to discern what God is doing in a congregation in a specific time. One as if you Tell your neighbor, you're in the best church. One as if you will. Even, even the visitor, the church that you go to is the best church. One as if you will. Hello? Any church where Jesus is exalted is the best church. Amen. And we thank God that here he is exalted. Amen. One as if you will. Are you guys ready to give? And it's just that we stick to programs. If you are not for program, I, I, I feel like I just want to pray for, for some time to infect and internalize all has just been shared. Amen. Get your offering wherever it is. Want us to pray. Mana so said give us all options that we need if you want to give offering we can give one as a favor so for those of you who for now want to give uh, the the till number is there 32 59 59 if you're redeeming your pledge for the city of destiny 502 9929 if you're giving uh, via wave remit and pass uh, that's the number there's 726 714 713 if you're writing checks, please address them to Life Church International Limuru. Don't ever miss out the international and the Limuru. One as if you because that's how it is registered and that's how they want to be written. One as if you One as if you I know very soon we're going to we'll share much more on you know, what God has given us as a strategy to just keep on raising the amount desired for City of Destiny. But let us also pray. One as if even. Tell neighbor, we need your prayer and we need your money. One as if even. One as if even. Amen, amen, amen. For those who are giving their tithes and you're here, maybe you can, I, I, I believe you already picked up the envelopes. I said in the first service, we, we have envelopes not because it's a culture, uh, you know, it, it's a culture that was introduced. And for us, especially, especially because of accountability, we want to be accountable so that we, you can come and we, we can give you your you know your, your tithing statement that you might know either how good or how bad you are doing amen 
Bwana sifiwe. Bwana sifiwe. I also want to present to you I've just remembered this. We are meeting with a team of people that are just helping us uh to draft the strategic plan for the next 3 years for the ministry. And one of the things that will happen is that we will require your input also in doing that. Bwana sifiwe. We are not there is a pattern that God has granted us but you're the people that are part of what God is doing. Amen. So we don't just want to lay according to what we have seen. We also want to hear some of the things that you guys have that can help us execute that pattern a bit much more better. Amen. Amen. So there will come a time, there will come a Sunday we will ask for your feedback concerning certain things. And I pray that you will be privy to giving us the information that we need. Amen. Hii kanisa ni yetu. Ambia nebe yako, hii kanisa ni yetu. In fact, look them eyeball to eyeball. Like how Simon Peter looked at Simon. Tell him, hii kanisa ni yako. Bwana sifiwe. Bwana sifiwe. Amen. We have our offerings. I'd like us to pray for our offerings so that we can release you. I also want to give mine so that as I pray for the offering is part of that. Amen. You know, Pastor Mark was sharing and he said that, that there was a that, that in, in, in Prophet, Prophet Paul's Manikis church there was a man who used to give a shilling as an offering and he became a point of contact. Now I want you to speak to your money and tell your money. You will be a point of contact now not to affect the finances of the church in a negative way but to affect the finances of, of the church in the way of God. Bwana sifiwe. It is your money now begin to speak to it for a minute. It is your offering. Pray, pray for your offering. Say money as I give you away. May you come back in many ways. As I give it to the work of the ministry, may the ministry advance rapidly. May my may my offering, may my seed, may my tithe, may my first fruit be a point of contact to accelerate the finances of the ministry i declare because i am the blessed one of the lord so is my finance and my offering as i give it it is blessed of the lord and as i give to the account of god may god remember me wanna say fever wanna say fever let's all rise for the words of benediction are part of Chinawiri Sako, there's going to be an education committee on the 18th of February at 3 p.m. So remember that and make plans to be here. Bwana sefiwe. Bwana sefiwe. Hallelujah. Amen. May the Lord, okay, this is how we, you receive benediction. You stretch out your hands and receive the words of blessing. Amen. For the Bible tells us it is in the, it is in the order of priests to bless. So as, as I stand here on behalf of our spiritual leader, I declare that this week, may the Lord bless you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you. May the Lord bring you peace, bring you health. And I declare, surely above all things, may you be in good health. May, may money find a way to locate you. And may you remember to stay in the house of the Lord all the days of your life. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. God bless you. For all the visitors, please don't just leave. We have a beautiful visitor's parlor over there. Please just kindly uh, wait with us for a few minutes so that we can have a small conversation at the visitor's parlor. But Mungu our bariki, our linde, our weke salama, kubukeni bado, tuko kwa maombi. 40 days of teacher's prayer. So tomorrow we meet for morning glory, for lunch hour, for revival service, and for midnight prayer hour. God bless you. See you guys.